Now then, we're in Lancashire. We've put in some masonry dog cramps on top of a chimney stack. We've had this stack dismantled and we've rebuilt it. It had issues with separation in it. We've got it rebuilt, lime mortar. So what we've got now is a top projection course on the chimney stack. We've replaced all that, rebedded it on with lime mortar. And we've got a fairly big, probably about five inch projection on this string course around the top of the chimney. So what we have to do is lead in some stainless steel dog cramps. These dog cramps will stop this top string around the chimney from pulling apart. It basically ties it all together in a ring. So what we're gonna to do today is gonna to show you how we do this. And first of all, you need to get yourself some molten lead. So what we're doing is we're cutting out the pockets for the cramps to go in. Uh, these, are, these are the cramps that's gonna go in. And uh, what we're having to do is where the pockets are, we're actually undercutting so that when the molten lead is in, it doesn't come back out, it, it physically can't come back out. And if you were to do a cross section through it, it would look like a dovetail um, on a woodworking joint so that um, the actual uh, cramp is, is locked into the uh, masonry. What we've done on these dog cramps, you can see we've put little notches in, we've just put them in with a grinder. Uh, and again, this stops the cramp slipping out of the uh, lead joint, it, the lead will pour in around here and it'll lock the cramp into uh, the molten lead when it's poured. Beautiful. What we've got to do is dry out all the masonry, just using this uh, burner. If we don't dry it out, when we come to pour the molten lead in, what happens, the molten lead turns the water to steam and then it kind of explodes and, and blows out the molten lead as the uh, water's evaporating from the cramp joint. So what we've got to do, we've got to dry them all out and get them as dry as we can. It just makes it a lot safer when we're actually pouring the molten lead in. Right, so what we've got, uh, we've got this burner here. We've put it on a stone so that we, we don't, we're not eating up the scaffy boards. Uh, we've got a pail there that we use for pouring the uh, molten lead with a big handle on it. Obviously, uh, you need some gloves on with this. We've got one of the dog cramps here. We just use this uh, for picking out all the oxidised um, metal from the top of the lead and all, and all the dross that comes off the top of it. So I've just got this on the burner now. Uh, we're just warming this up. What you find if you don't warm the cramp up or you try and put something in the molten lead, the lead sticks to it and uh, it, it, it just bungs up. So whenever we're doing this, we, we always have something like this that we, that, that, that's just sat at the side of the burner there, just warming up. Um, we've got half a, well, about a quarter of a tub in there now. So we've got this melted. It's been on for about five minutes now, just on a low heat. We never try and rush it because you can end up burning through the pail uh, with the heat that this burner produces. Well, you can see you just get this excess of uh, material on the top of it which is just basically from when we've had lead in it because we generally just use old lead on site, old flashings and soakers that we pull off site when we've replaced them. So we just we just melt, melt that down and use that for uh, bedding these cramps in. Again, gloves on, glasses on when you're doing anything like this. Got me to have gloves on. Not that we're sponsored by ESAB, but if you want to. When you put it in, it does spit a little bit. And again, it's just the water evaporating off. So we're doing just because this lead's wet before we drop it in there. Like it's in on that first one, it just spits a li little bit. Just gonna show what happens if you put wet lead into molten lead. This is something that you really don't want to be doing. I've done it a few times, so I know I know what the reaction is gonna be, so but you've got to be so careful with it. Scary stuff. We've got, 
we've got this cramp dried out. Now, we don't want this lead to go everywhere down all the nicks and crannies, so what we normally do is just get some modelling clay um, and make a dam around the cramp. What we do is put this clay on. This keeps it within the cramp area, stops it flowing all over the masonry. And once we get it in, we'll take this clay out. And it just allows you to overfill the cramp slightly over the masonry. Got some grips to grab hold at the bottom of the tin. Hey, no explosions. Done this before. It doesn't take long at all uh, when it's in there. And what we want to do is get it, get this clay stripped off it before it, it, it goes too much. Because what I want to do is just tidy this up and make it look a bit prettier. So there we go, it's, it's already set now so I can pull this clay off. So what we do while it's still while it's while the lead's still warm, you can see we just beat these edges down, form a nice seal against the masonry, uh, compact it down. I mean, no one's going to see this until they pull this chimney down again, but it's got to look pretty. And all we're doing is just shaping it around the cramp. Some of these that we've put on roof copings, you know, they, they, they're not actually buried, they are seen, so uh, this is just a way of dressing them down and making them look good. There we go. One down, five to go. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull the sockets first. We've got a little bit of flotation on the last one. So we'll just um, get the sockets board first. Just give it a couple of seconds and then that'll uh, just help with the, uh, with the cramp trying to float. So we'll just get these two sockets poured in. You can see this one, it's not fully dried out. That's why we've got that bubbling in the, uh, in the lead. It's just the water in the socket that's, uh, that's causing that. And sometimes you've just got to let it cool a little bit. Sometimes it's just too much trying to pour in at once. But if you're pretty good at pouring, get it to work and you can just see on this little nick here what that clay does uh, stops it running around you see we've got this little tongue on that's run down we didn't need to get in more down on this side because we have plenty of coverage on the uh, on the cramp down at this side so what I did just let this side let this bottom side cool down run it down here and then we'll just dress it in now with a with armor. Ta-da! <laughs>